Prepare yourself for a journey to wisdom, wellness, and wonder through Greek philosophy. Whatever your hopes and dreams may be, you will emerge from this guided meditation much more comfortable and much more confident than before. It will all seem effortless to you. Now prepare yourself. Arrange your clothes. Make sure your other devices are turned off so that we will have no disturbances during this guided meditation. Your hands should be to the side of your body with the palms facing upwards. At the end of this video, please like, comment, share it with your friends, and make sure you're subscribed to this channel. If you'd like to listen to today's session without any advertisement interruptions, head on over to patreon.com. You can go ahead and close your eyes if you feel more comfortable. Now let's begin by taking a deep breath together, inhaling through the nose, holding that breath and spreading it throughout your whole body from the top of your head to the tips of your toes. And only when you've spread the oxygen in your body can you then exhale through the mouth. Again, inhale deeply, deeply, deeply. Relaxing your facial muscles. Relaxing your shoulders. Spreading the oxygen to all the cells of your body and exhaling through the mouth with double the time so that really you empty out any stress. Once again, a deep, deep inhalation, relaxing your jaw in particular by dropping your mouth open, spreading the oxygen throughout your whole body relaxing your shoulders and again exhaling double the time so that you feel deeply deeply relaxed observe your abdomen your stomach area as it's rising and falling with every breath you take Observe how it inflates like a balloon every time you're inhaling and how it deflates every time you exhale. Allow yourself to breathe naturally, relaxing and being comfortable with every breath you take. Inhaling and exhaling. Your shoulders are relaxing. Your whole right arm is relaxing. 
Your whole left arm is relaxing. The abdomen area is relaxing. Your genital area is relaxing. Your whole left leg is relaxing. Your whole right leg is relaxing. You feel yourself sinking deeper and deeper as you feel your whole body relaxing. Practice number one, the stoic art of accepting and loving whatever is happening. The stoics accept rather than fight every little thing that's happening to them. They believe that if we resist reality, if we think that things are going against us, if we fight with what is, then we will suffer. Therefore, we should not wish for reality to be any different, but accept it as it is. If this is the will of nature, then so be it. That's a maxim the Stoics lived by. Today we have a similar saying, Thy will be done. And it doesn't matter whether we call it God, nature, fortuna, or fate, but we must acknowledge that there's something bigger than us and that we don't control everything around us. Marcus Aurelius put it very nicely when he said, O oh world! I am in tune with every note of thy great harmony. For me, nothing is early, nothing is late, if it be timely for thee. O nature, all that thy seasons yield is fruit for me. The art of acquiescence, as it is called, is about the willing acceptance of external events. Accept even what the majority of people would judge as negative or bad. Epictetus says that as philosophers we should adapt to whatever happens so that nothing happens against our will and nothing that we wish for fails to happen. Bring your will into harmony with what's going on. Fate leads the willing and drags along the reluctant, as Seneca put it. Do you remember a dog leashed to the cart metaphor? This is a famous metaphor that the Stoics talk about. The dog can either enjoy the ride and run smoothly alongside the cart, or he can stubbornly resist the direction of the cart while being dragged behind anyway. In other words, if we resist what happens, then we get dragged just like that dog. And this is called suffering. Does that sound familiar to you? Have you resisted in your life? It's much smarter to accept reality and focus where our power lies. As we've seen earlier in the studies of Stoicism, the hallmark of an admirable poker player is that he or she plays the best regardless of the hand they are dealt. In the end, not the one with the objectively best cards, but the one who plays his cards best wins. You don't get to choose the hands you're dealt in this life, only how you want to play them. 
your hand in poker, as in life, is indifferent. Learn to accept it equally, without judging, without self-victimization. If you can do that, if you can accept rather than resist what's happening, then you will no longer be dependent upon things being a certain way. The Stoics call this amor fati, loving what is, embracing what is. Now, you may think that this is a very passive way of living life. This is why I'd like to give you an example that will clarify how different the Stoics thought. At the age of 67, Thomas Edison returned home after a dinner. He was informed that a fire had broken out at the research campus a few miles away. The fire engines could not stop the fire. It was fueled by chemicals. Green and yellow flames shot up into the sky. The whole empire of Edison went up in ashes in one night. When Edison made it to the scene, he immediately told his son, Get your mother and all her friends. They'll never see a fire like this in their life before. What a reaction! Imagine! He lost much of what he'd been working for his whole life, and instead of getting sad or angry, he accepted it and tried to make the best of it. He started rebuilding what the fire had destroyed the next day. That is playing your cards well. That is non-resistance or acceptance, acquiescence of what is. Plus, this example shows that stoic acceptance has nothing to do with being passive or resignation. Edison started rebuilding everything the very next day. One can say he even built it better than it was before. He accepted his fate graciously and tried to make the best of it. And that's what the Stoics advise us to do. Don't fight with your reality, but bring your will into harmony with it and focus on where your power lies. Marcus Aurelius had a trick to bring his will into harmony with reality. He compares what happens to us to what a doctor prescribes to us. Just like you take some medicine when a doctor tells you to, we should take external events as they are because they're like the medicine that's there to help us. What happens to us is nature's treatment to becoming better people. Those things are happening for us, not against us, even if it doesn't seem so at first. Here's what helps me personally. I believe that nature is immensely complex and it's impossible to tell whether anything that happens is good or bad. And because you never know what will be the consequence of misfortunes. And you never know what will be the consequences of good fortunes. For example, there are people who have won the lottery and they have committed suicide after a short while, after having spent all the money and having lost all their closest friends, or having 
given themselves up to a life of decadence and addiction. So was winning the lottery a good thing or a bad thing? In most cases, statistics shows that it's actually a negative force in one's life. Therefore, I try to accept everything as if I had chosen it, as if I had been chosen by the universe to improve myself through this specific lesson. In this way, I am not a drama queen, a whiny victim, but rather a responsible co-creator with the universe. So my dear friend, in today's guided meditation, I want you to simply focus on your life. Think of the complaints that you have right now in your life. Perhaps you want to think of three specific complaints. What are your top complaints right now in your life? What is the thing you're whining and feeling like a victim about? It's time to look at these complaints from another perspective to reframe them and tell yourself that these things are not happening to me but for me so that I may improve as a human being so that I may develop my qualities when you begin thinking like this opportunities will present themselves Again, being a Stoic, you will not get excited about that because you realize that things that appear as opportunities are sometimes negative and things that appear as negative may turn out to be positive. That's why the Stoic is balanced and calm no matter what is happening. We don't get too excited or too depressed. Does that make us boring? Not at all. It makes us strong, reliable, free of external events, for we do not base our happiness on external circumstances. Our happiness is something that comes from deep within from our connection to our wisdom and our constant striving to improve ourselves, It's a sport in the same way that an athlete is constantly training. We too as Stoics are constantly training our thoughts to be more prudent, balanced, harmonious, and to make sure that we are functioning from a place of inner certainty, a place of wisdom, courage, harmony. We are not reactive beings. We are self-reflecting human beings. We reflect on our thoughts. Our thoughts don't simply happen to us. As Stoics, we are constantly vigilant through the practice of proshohi, the Greek word for mindfulness. Proshohi. We are constantly evaluating our thoughts and filtering our thoughts. We do not believe that just because we have a thought, we will accept it. This is what we have logic and reason for, to reflect on how useful these thoughts are, 
how kind our thoughts are and how true our thoughts are. So when a fear or insecurity comes up or we catch ourselves whining and complaining, we reflect and we may edit our thoughts. Yes, we edit our thoughts. We improve our thoughts because we know that the quality of our life depends on the quality of our thoughts. This is a constant practice. This is what we call askesis. And it is the same root of the word ascetic. Although we do not live up in the hills or in the caves like ascetics do in the monasteries, we are, if you like, urban ascetics. We are practitioners. That's what the word ascesis means, practitioners. So I invite you to become a practitioner of clear thinking, of objective thinking, to separate yourself from the crowd that simply reacts to things and events. You know better. You know that what seems like a negative or problematic situation can turn in to the greatest blessing. So during this week, I want you to reflect on your thoughts. I want you to walk through life, accepting what is happening. Simply try it out, even if only for the next seven days. Simply accept whatever is happening to you, whatever is happening on the outside. And take care of your energy so that it's not affected by other people's negativity. It's okay to think differently. It's not by chance that Steve Jobs, who used the motto, think different for Apple computers, had once said, I would give up all my technology for an afternoon with Socrates. For Socrates is the father of Stoicism. Stoicism was inspired by his thinking. And the main issue with Socrates was the truth, getting to the truth and thinking clear and truthful thoughts doing away with self-deception and lies. So I invite you during the next seven days to practice this self-scrutiny. Don't get upset with yourself when you have a negative thought or a self-sabotaging thought. Simply observe it and let it go. Let go of any limitations, self-limitations. Start becoming more the leader of yourself and of your thoughts. And if you like, you can share your observations in the comments below. I would love to hear of your progress and how it has improved the quality of your life. And now, on the count of three, you're going to return to full open awareness, returning to your ordinary life. One, take a deep breath, expanding your shoulders, expanding your arms over your head like you do early in the morning, stretching yourself. 
two, take another deep breath and move your body stretching from side to side. Three, extend to the tips of your toes and the tips of your fingers, stretching your whole body, feeling revitalized, you're feeling confident, you're feeling powerful and certain of yourself. And as you're returning to full awareness, simply stretch your neck from side to side, relaxing your shoulders and opening your eyes if you've had them closed up until now. You look around and you see that the environment hasn't changed, but deep in yourself, you know that you have experienced a deep transformation. The reality may look the same, but you have changed and that changes everything. That will attract the most positive energy. No matter what happens, you know that you are able to handle things from a place of inner strength and confidence. Thank you for joining me in this guided meditation. I look forward to seeing you next time. Once again, thank you for supporting my work on Patreon.com.